morning, fans of Privateer FX, coming at you at the New York Open here. Been a very quiet session here in foreign exchange and also even in equities. Uh, equities open down, S&Ps have been floating around 27.75 the whole session, no drama there. We're at 78 now, the low has been 71. Euro's been, uh, I don't know, 98, 28, the majority of the um, session. Cables come off a little bit from a high of 80 down to a low of around 40. Looks to me like we're waiting for New York to get in to take the next action here, uh, whether it's continued risk off or whether it's continued dollar buying. I'm not sure. Core Kiwi, core Aussie. That has paid, uh, and if you're like most of us who got short in the Asian session, equities are still still in the money on the short side. I want to bring this dollar yen chart up because it's a lot of people are talking about it. It's a little bit uh, controversial in a risk-off scenario, but we have this downward sloping trend line. It's basically like three or four years old, so very, very powerful um, downward sloper. Depending on which points you attach, it makes a big difference on where you think the exact break is, but we now have a double top here, really kind of triple top if you think 48 or 50. It looks like 111, 50, 60 area is going to be massively important in dollar yen. Uh, if PPI is hot and if this market gets caught short risk, this is an interesting play. Makes absolutely no sense um, based on like the logic that trade war is bad for the global economy should be risk off. But it makes perfect sense in the fact that fast money is short dollar yen. They are all going to take their stop where fast money takes their stop, which is above double tops or just past 50. Um, so this is something to keep in mind we will take a sort of a tactical punt in dollar yen getting long with a very tight stop through 50 today if we see it trading at 21 now so far away we've been figure figure 20 in Europe but just sharing that the other thing is we've got Bank of Canada today so this sucker's gonna move we've taken out stops above 60 now 85 percent of the analysts approximately think they're going to raise rates today. Um, if they don't raise, there'll be uh, a wild move higher in dollar CAD. That's the surprise side. If they do raise, I think we are going to visit this uh, 12970 uh, area. But if you remember this trend line from before that caused us much angst, as we tried to get long dollar CAD through 130.10, then 130.20, then 130.55, and it was just a series of fuck ups. This is going to be the first death knock touch of this, which is coming in around 130. So we do look for support between 130.50 and 130. Um, so even if they do raise, we're thinking there might be a bit of a dovish raise, especially since there's concern about trade and general concern in Canada about Trump. Um, you know, he's like uh, he's like the Joker in a Batman film. Nobody really knows what the hell's happening there. So I don't know. Um, we're, we're you're gonna have to play it by ear. Obviously, if they don't raise, you just close your eyes and buy dollar CAD. And if they do raise, you have to then listen to uh, the central bank governor and see what the statement says and see if it's a dovish or a hawkish raise. Either way, our bias is going to be buying this. So we're either going to buy, be buying this on a fade around 130 um, or we're going to be buying it if they don't raise rates. So, two very different scenarios. We'll be buying it at two very different levels. But the market would not take it well if they don't raise today. 
You don't want to shock or surprise 85% of the analysts. Anyway, those are two ideas going into the New York session. Core short, Kiwi, Aussie seem to keep paying. So this is sort of your trade war trade. That's not bad. And then if things turn around, dollar yen through 50 or 40. Uh, and then trade the news on the Bank of Canada release, which is two and a half hours from now. All right, that's it for me. I will wish you guys good luck and see you at the New York Open. Ciao.